Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a fantasy film, Mirror Mask. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The little girl Helena's family owns a circus. However, she does not like to be part of it. This day, she again refuses to perform, but gives in to her mother, short-named Mom, after a heated argument. Reluctantly, she changes into the performance suit to fulfill her duty. To her shock, Mom faints backstage during the show. Helena and her dad soon find out about it, and send Mom to the hospital. As Mom requires more medical attention, they have to temporarily suspend the circus shows. That threatens to close the circus, which is already struggling to make ends meet. Although she feels the hardship of reality for the first time, she is still young, and could not offer any help to her parents. Whenever she is reminded of the quarrel she had with mom before she fell ill, Helena's heart is filled with regrets. Troubled a lot, she then tries to find peace in the drawing. Dad informs her that mom will undergo an operation in the evening. Helena throws her arms around dad, and sheds tears of worry. At night, Helena hears some music from a violin. She wakes up in the dark to call dad for help, but he is not around. Curious Helena walks towards the source of music. Later, she arrives in an alley, where a lonely violinist, a masked man named Valentine, and one more performer. As soon as the music comes to a stop, shadow, darkness sweeps through the alley. Violinist is devoured by the shadow, and breaks into pieces. Valentine grabs Helena to evade through a door. At this moment, a scary beast suddenly crawls out of the room. Valentine suggests that they should throw a book at the beast. Helena heeds his advice to stop the beast. In order to leave this house, Helena retrieves two more books from the shelf, and curses the book, mimicking the voice of a man. Miraculously, the two books turn into frisbee for them to ride on. Slowly and steadily, Valentine and Helena manage to get out of the place. While floating in the air, Helena finds the world half real and half surreal. Soon after, they arrive at the city. Little do they know that the Queen of Shadows has sent out spider spies to monitor their movements. There, Helena and Valentine are surprised to see many citizens fleeing their homes. They learn that the Queen of Light has fallen into a deep sleep, and the city is now at stake to collapse. All of a sudden, a group of soldiers mistake Helena for the princess, and so capture her. Despite her objection, they bring her back to the palace. It turns out that in order to awaken the Queen of Light, the Prime Minister has been searching for the charm. When he sees Helena, he realizes she is not the one he has been looking for. Helena then knows that there is a delicate balance between the world of light and the world of darkness, but the balance is destroyed by an incident. Some time ago, the Queen of Light fell into an unnatural sleep after she met with the Princess of Shadows. Since then, the City of Light has been gradually devoured by shadows. Helena finds the Queen of Light resembles her mom, and so she realizes that what is happening must be in her painted world, and that it is her mission to rescue the Queen, and save the City of Light. At first, the Prime Minister thinks that it is too late to awaken the Queen. But during their conversation, the white rose in Queen's hand begins to bloom. That gives him much hope, so he gives Helena the go-ahead. Later, Helena journeys to the library, accompanied by Valentine. In her quest for charm, a book named The Truly Useful Book lands on her head. She flips it open and finds one page saying, remember what your mother said. She continues to read more and learns that sunshine is one key factor to awaken the Queen. When she looks out the window, she sees a flash of light. Immediately, they run to where it is. On an empty street, Helena discovers a window that allows her to observe her own bedroom in the real world. She soon realizes that her own drawings are clues she would need. Following the tips, she goes to a park named Giants. Over there, she sees the sun image shown in the drawing. Just when she is about to enter the park, the monster, who keeps the door, pops out and questions her like the Sphinx. Helena is wise enough to answer all questions without trouble. And then, she takes the spiral stairs up, and asks the two floating Godzilla statues about the charm. To her disappointment, the statues speak their Godzilla shit too slowly. At the same time, darkness encroaches on the park. Racing against the clock, Helena and Valentine urge the giants to give the metal box that they safeguard. The giant throws the box at Helena, and lets her know that the charm is actually the mirror mask. Soon after, one of the giants is taken down by the shadow. Helena and Valentine have no time to mourn over the loss, but immediately flee the park. As they land their feet somewhere safe, Helena takes out the metal box to study. It contains a key, but they have no clue which locks it matches with. Furthermore, they have zero knowledge about the mirror mask. In order to make some progress, Helena and Valentine decide to step into a mask shop. The owner receives them warmly, and serves them with delicious cake. 
At the washing room, Helena looks out the window and sees another Helena in her bedroom. The doppelganger of herself argues with dad and even stares at the world of the painting. Helena avoids eye contact with her and leaves the mask shop. On the way, they are surrounded by a horde of hungry beasts. Helena refers to the useful book for tips and tears the page to distract the beasts. While the beasts mount on the paper, Helena and Valentine run away. To Helena, windows are a channel for her to see the real world. Though she tells Valentine about such an exciting discovery, he does not understand it. Helena feels a little upset because no one shares her feelings. Soon after, she finds a building that resembles the key, which they found earlier. Without further ado, the two walk up the stairs to take a close look. While searching around inside the building, Helena accidentally falls into an underground pit. The cave is home to a flock of chimp-like doves. Helena is not afraid of them at all. Instead, she befriends them and probes about the mirror mask. At this moment, the Raven of the Queen of Shadows bursts in. To protect Helena, the chimp-like doves carry her all the way up and eventually into the sky. Soaring overhead, Helena looks down on the landscape and quickly spots a bright spot. This makes her realize that the so-called mirror mask exists at the intersection of the land of the sun and the land of the night. Having made some progress on the mirror mask, Helena looks into a window again. This time around, she finds the doppelganger herself falling in love with a gangster in the real world. As she watches, the couple is kissing each other. Frustrated, she shouts at the real world. Valentine soon pulls her away. And then they travel to a lake to find the mirror mask. By the lake, sees mom. What's more, the phantom first appears as the queen of light and then transforms into mom in real life. Helena orders herself to be more focused after realizing that her dreams and her mother's are beginning to overlap. In order to enter the lake, she thinks hard from her own perspective. Her thoughts lead to the rising of an island. Helena and Valentine soon go up to the island and walk into a room. In the middle of the room, they see a stone pillar full of lock holes. She immediately takes out the key to try them one by one. Suddenly, there comes an earthquake. That is because the painting is shifted by Helena herself in reality. Not only that, but the Helena in real life also changes the style of such drawings and argues with dad again. Helena in the fantasy world feels very sad watching the quarrel. Later, the island falls into an abyss. Valentine secretly contacts the Queen of Shadows and takes Helena to the Queen. By doing so, Valentine receives a big sum of money. Helena tastes the bitter pain of betrayal for the very first time. There, the Queen of Shadow keeps Helena and brainwashes her to replace the missing Princess of Shadows. Forgetting her own origin and identity, Helena indulges in a corrupted life. On the other hand, Valentine cannot get rid of his guilt after selling Helena. He returns to the stone pillar on that mysterious island and tries to open the lock. Sometime later, he manages to find the correct match. Unlocking it, he finds a treasure box that contains a letter written by the Princess of Shadows. It turns out that Princess of Shadows cannot put up with her Queen Mother's control in every detail of her life. She dreams of freedom. So she switches her life with Helena, with the help of the mirror mask. Valentine seeks Helena as soon as he learns the truth. Soon after, he awakens Helena's senses and tells her the whole story. Having read the Princess Diary and the useful book, Helena deduces that the mirror mask is hidden in the mirror of the Princess. So they quickly obtain the mirror mask and flee the palace. The key to switching back is to find the correct window. To Helena's disappointment, half through the journey, Valentine is again tempted by some eye-pleasing fruits. In the end, he takes the future fruit, which takes 300 years to grow. And then, he sees his own future and realizes that he is merely an unlucky waiter in the real world. Helena tells him to focus on the current mission. Putting aside those worries, Valentine and Helena run into the dark jungle. It is a barren path where not a single house is seen. They keep running, but cannot find a window to try the magic. Meanwhile, the Queen of Shadows calls her officials for a meeting. She is excited to take over the Kingdom of Light and combine the two realms. But the news of the princess has gone missing for a second time upsets her a lot. At once, she transforms into a dark cloud to give a fast and furious chase. Helena and Valentine are shocked to see the Queen of Shadows appear in the sky. She does not give them any room for negotiation. When she opens her mouth, the two poor things are covered by darkness. Unexpectedly, Valentine defends them with a the mirror mask. The light reflected from the mirror mask summons a tower to carry them away. The Queen of Shadows spreads her numerous hands to snatch them, but to no avail. Helena discovers a window in the tower and wants to evade the fantasy world through it. But the Princess of Shadows has already realized what happens and is now destroying the paintings. 
It is clear that Helena cannot return to reality, when all the paintings are torn off. True enough, the entrances disappear before her eyes. Thinking that Helena will never be able to make it back, Princess of Shadows goes to the rooftop, to celebrate her everlasting freedom. To her shock, Helena appears through the painting on the wall at the rooftop. As soon as she puts on the mirror mask, Princess of Shadows is pulled inside, then taken back to the painting world. After that, the real Helena finally lands on her foot safely. She opens her eyes, only to find herself lying on the rooftop. Dad covers her with a coat, and embraces her. He informs her that mom's surgery is successful. Helena bursts into tears of joy. At the end of the story, mom recovers from her illness, and Helena adopts a more positive mind towards her life. Owing to the family's concerted effort, the circus creates bigger success than before. Many people want to be part of the circus. Among the job applicants, Helena is more than thrilled to see the boy whom she has been waiting for, and the boy turns out to be Valentine. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.